Hello everyone. Do you think time travel is possible? This question has become more popular among people since the publication of the novel, The Time Machine. The novel tells the story of an inventor who travels back in time to the year 802 AD, raising the debate on whether time travel is possible today. For instance, Stephen Hawking believed, in his final days, that someday humanity would develop time travel technology. Did you know there are people claiming to have traveled through time already? Once, a man claimed to have gone to the year 2345 and recounted unfortunate events of the future. Can we travel back in time? In today's video, we'll explore the story of this man who claims to have time traveled and whether it's possible or not. Since childhood, a person named Al has been considered peculiar. Born in 1927, Al was incredibly intelligent, with an astonishing memory, earning him the nickname, Walking Encyclopedia. He claimed to remember everything he read, word for word. Al had a remarkable adulthood until he watched the 1984 film, The Philadelphia Experiment. This film depicted a way the US Navy allegedly hid ships during World War I and suggested time travel. After watching, he felt a strange sensation, almost like an epiphany. He seemingly remembered his past life, claiming his real name was Edward Cameron, born in 1916. He alleged that the people he thought were his parents were actually legal guardians appointed by the government. Moreover, the state hid the fact that his biological brother, Duncan, was kept secret from him. As he recalled memories buried in his past, he learned he was part of the Philadelphia Experiment in 1931 alongside his brother. He claimed witnessing experiments during World War II in 1943. According to him, a team of experts aimed to hide American ships from Nazis. The team consisted of John Hutchinson, Newman, and Tesla. They achieved some success in hiding smaller ships in 1940 before focusing on the USS Eldridge. However, during a crucial test on July 22, 1943, something went wrong. Allegedly, the ship disappeared and reappeared 15 minutes later. He and his brother jumped off the ship but found themselves in a different time and place, not Philadelphia in 1943 but Montauk, New York, in 1983. They were surrounded by guards and helicopters, claiming that guards arrested them and took them to an underground facility. According to Al, John von Neumann mentioned the ship being trapped in a hyperspace bubble, posing an existential threat to Earth. The only way to prevent this was to go back and destroy the ship's generators. They did so and, after that, Al lost consciousness, waking up in a hospital in the year 2137, suffering from radiation burns due to time travel. He claimed to have worked in a hospital there without the use of traditional bandages or antibiotic creams, instead using advanced light and vibration energy for treatments. He also mentioned significant changes in American geography, claiming the United States lost considerable land by 2025, like the absence of Florida, replaced by Atlanta. Moreover, the world was under a military dictatorship due to nuclear wars, with only 300 million people left on Earth. At this point in time, the world has been devastated by nuclear war, but humanity has built a new order. According to Al, when humanity discovered machines against gravity and replaced human labor with robots, issues with money and employment disappeared. There was peace because there was no need for war. After this brief period, Al was suddenly sent back to 1983, but his brother faced unwanted effects and died at a young age. However, during the process of returning, Al's memories were erased, and he was sent back to 1927 with a false identity. Could all of this be real? Many conspiracy theorists believe Al, but there are many who don't. Nevertheless, he insists he traveled through time. In fact, we'll be able to see if this story is true in two years. According to Al, by the year 2025, Florida will disappear. On the other hand, there's something more important to consider, can time travel truly be achievable? Time progresses for all of us at the same rate. 
The concept of characters in popular science fiction films like Doctor Who, Star Trek, and Back to the Future traveling to the past or future by hopping into a vehicle isn't entirely in line with the concept of time travel. Stories of time travel depict protagonists changing the past or present based on information from the future, implying interaction with parallel universes or alternative timelines. In these stories, time travelers often enter a time machine and disappear, finding themselves among cowboys, knights, or even dinosaurs. While these films portray time travel in their own style, scientists don't believe such a thing is reasonable in the real world. Nevertheless, they don't completely dismiss the idea. Jumping through time is physically possible, but there are crucial intricacies. However, until now, no one has presented a scientific method for time travel. On the other hand, Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity assumes that time depends on the observer's perspective. Therefore, a person moving at a speed close to the speed of light would age much slower than a person who remains stationary. For example, astronaut Scott Kelly aged slightly slower than his twin brother Mark during his time in space. The most bizarre physics concepts related to time travel can be found under topics like wormholes, black holes, and string theory. In 1905, Einstein introduced the theory of special relativity, one of the cornerstones of modern physics. Later, Einstein expanded it with the theory of general relativity, describing the continuity of space-time. Objects moving at constant speeds along a straight line are described in special relativity, where these speeds have no absolute frame of reference because everything's velocity is measured relative to something else. If you're moving at the speed of light, then light moves at the same speed. This leads us to the second point, the speed of light is unaffected by changes in context or measurement. Thus, the speed of light is an absolute limit, forming the basis for time travel as we know it. A fast-moving observer perceives time passing slower than a stationary observer. As humans, we haven't reached the speed of light yet, but the International Space Station orbits the Earth at 28,000 kph, and here we can refer back to the example of Scott Kelly. Scott spent 520 days in space while his twin Mark stayed on Mars Station for only 54 days. As a result, due to the inequality in experiencing time rates, the age difference between the twins increased. When a person accelerates, time slows down for them. Additionally, according to Einstein's general theory of relativity, the flow of time is also tied to local gravitational force. According to cosmologist Dave Goldberg from Drexel University, time flows slower near large bodies, near neutron stars' surfaces, and even on Earth. Goldberg says spending a few hours at the edge of a black hole where gravity is very high would equate to one year on Earth. Returning from near a black hole to Earth would be like time travel to the future, but there isn't a similar formula for traveling back in time. Scientists have been trying to solve time travel paradoxes within the framework of the general theory of relativity for decades. According to Fabio Cia from the Scandinavian Institute of Theoretical Physics, the first attempt to solve these issues began in the 1920s, and in a particular experiment, spinning cylinders bend space-time. The hypothetical path of an observer spinning rapidly bends space-time, causing it to fold upon itself, a time loop due to gravity bending space-time and folding upon itself. More research was conducted on the subject during those years, and from the 1980s onwards, scientists started taking a serious interest in time travel. For instance, Igor Novikov from Russia and Kip Thorne from the United States wrote a paper on closed timelike curves in 1990 delving into the mechanics of time travel and exploring how this travel might be possible, presenting numerous theories. For example, if you were to throw a billiard ball into a time machine and it went into the past, colliding with its former self and returning to the present, it seems like a paradox, doesn't it? Actually, since the 1990s, various studies have been conducted on the subject, but significant progress hasn't been achieved. Every time machine model developed had its flaws. However, these models had some potential, yet researchers trying to resolve these flaws consistently encountered a hurdle. 
For instance, Albert Einstein's discovery that mass and energy could be interchangeable suggested that most time travel theories required negative mass and hence negative energy, which has not been encountered practically, as mass in theory can be either positive or negative, like electric charge. For time travel, using rare elements might offer a solution. A wormhole, the tunnel in space-time between two distant locations in the universe, needs such elements to keep it open. Without negative mass, the tunnel would collapse under the weight of gravity. One could think of this as corresponding to positive mass or energy related to the wormhole. Although many scientists, like Goldberg, agree that the existence of negative mass is highly improbable, some researchers believe that quantum phenomena, like negative energy on small scales, hold promise. In this context, some researchers propose time travel theories involving a wormhole or cosmic tube connecting two distant points, allowing time travel. By folding the gap between two points in these models, you're effectively time traveling. If you move one end of the wormhole toward a massive gravitational field like a black hole and keep the other end close to a weaker gravitational force, this effect occurs. In a high gravitational field, time slows down. Thus, on the other side of the wormhole, a particle or another mass component from the past might form. However, creating a wormhole becomes complex due to factors like the requirement for negative mass and energy, so they disintegrate. Thus, wormholes are only theoretically possible, and there's no practical way to produce them. Perhaps, as Stephen Hawking suggested, the issue isn't just not knowing how to create time travel devices but it's also that it's impossible. In an article published in Physical Review in 1992, Hawking proposed the existence of a chronology protection conjecture, preventing the emergence of closed time-like curves and thereby preserving time in the universe. Part of his claim was based on potential contradictions arising from time travel, such as the billiard ball paradox and the grandfather paradox. The grandfather paradox is explained as follows. If you were to kill your grandfather before he had children, you wouldn't be born. Therefore, you can't time travel, and you can't kill your grandfather. Augustine Rayo, a philosopher at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, is interested in these kinds of paradoxes, noting that these ideas raise questions beyond causality and the concept of time. For instance, according to him, time travel also involves free will. This can be explained as follows, if your grandfather lives long enough to have children, even if you time travel back, you wouldn't be able to change anything. However, if you try to kill him before he has children, you would fail because you've already been born. Consequently, no matter what you do when you go to the past, you won't be able to kill your grandfather, something will prevent you during your attempt. At this point, Ryo's question comes in. Can we talk about free will in such a situation? If you can't go back and influence fate by going to the past and trying to kill your grandfather, are you truly free? What do you think? Will time travel be possible in the coming years, or could Allah's story be true? Share your thoughts in the comments. Until a new video, take care.